Hi, Tina Boncina is joining me from Ljubljana, Slovenia, where she is a physician, psychotherapist, trainer, and lecturer. She has offered to give us insight into how she works with people who are suffering from burnout and trauma. Thank you, Tina. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, I'm so glad I, um, you invited me so that we can talk about this uh, interesting subject. Yes. So to start, I'm curious how you were introduced to logosynthesis as a physician and a psychotherapist in Slovenia, because I understand that you were the first certified practitioner in your country. So can you tell us your story and what initially attracted you to train in this model? Mm -hmm. um, well, I was, um, I just quit my, my residency in psychiatry and started my own private practice. Um, and I was searching for something that would deal with causes, not only the symptoms. Because while working as a physician and while doing the residence in psychiatry, I sorely missed um, something that would release uh, the, you see now I'm already talking in, in energy terms, but for something that would uh, really cure the person, not just alleviate the symptoms. Okay, this was my, um, let's say, big complaint about the Western medicine and the, the Western approach to, to um, healing mental issues, that they all deal with the symptoms, not really with the causes. And then I stumbled, uh, while doing my residency, I stumbled upon uh, Dr. Ramachandran, who dealt with um, mental pictures and who invented the mirror box for curing the phantom, phantom limp or phantom uh, pain. And it inspired me to, to um, dwell, uh, to delve, how do you say, how to dive into the subject further. And because I was starting out my own private practice, I had lots of time, not a lot of clients. And I went on all the social media that I could get my hands on, including LinkedIn. And because I didn't really know what to do with this uh, um, network, I decided that I will click all of the people who are TSTA uh, because I was a transactional analyst and just connect with them and learn something new. And because Willem is uh, TSTA as well, I clicked him and uh, um, sent him an invitation to, to be a part of his network. And he responded by um, saying hello and posing the question, why did you click me? Have you heard about logosynthesis? <laughs> I said, no. And uh, he sent me a link. Uh, I read about it. Immediately, it made a lot of sense because of all the mental pictures I was researching beforehand. And um, I gathered the courage to, to apply for a seminar, the first one that was possible in English. And it was in Belgium, in Brussels. So I joined him there. And uh, well, the rest is history, as you say. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a great story. And it's true, right? Because a lot of times with the, with the mental health challenges, it's really hard to, if, if we knew right off what the cause was, then it would be easier to treat. But to me, until Willem's work kind of discovered that these mental images are what triggers these really distressing reactions in people that we associate with mental health issues, like both the physical sensations, the thoughts and the emotions, until we knew that these images, like frozen perceptions triggered a frozen reaction, we didn't know the cause. And to me, that's where Willem's work is, is so groundbreaking. Have you come across anything, like I, as far as other models that can can they heal that in the same way? Mm, um, let's say that other models can come to these conclusions, but they take a lot of time, a lot of soul searching, 
and much more effort. And uh, I think that there, um, I always say psychoanalysis is very effective, but for healthy people, okay? Not for people who are in distress. People who are in distress are not capable to do that kind of uh, soul searching and, and uh, rational and emotional exploration that would be needed in order to achieve a healthy uh, position in life. And, and, and uh, you know, they, they lack the strength, they lack the insight, all of the body reacts and focuses only on the problem. And you cannot get a solution by focusing on the same um, on the same problem all of the time. You have to open up and search for something else. So I do, uh, I'm not underestimating other approaches. They are very valuable in, um, you know, you have to, to know how the, the mind and body work. Uh, and um, only by having this insight, you can explore even with logosynthesis. You do need some extra knowledge. Um, logosynthesis is, uh, let's say, an upgrade. Uh, that uh, enables you to really go deeper. Um, but yeah, well, I'm so enthusiastic about logosynthesis. I did not explore much further than that. I did go into the EMDR and the brain spotting. Both are new methods that uh, are intended to resolve trauma as well okay that are this is the the, the beauty of yeah. recording live um but uh, i prefer logosynthesis to uh, both of them i think it's much more elegant and much more gentle on the client and um for the guide for the therapist as well yeah. And like when you talk about, um, you know, for healthy people, um, I trained as a dietitian. So my health focus was always on prevention. And I enjoy the fast paced, you know, corporate career it was demanding, but I really thrived on it. But if I look back five years, I might now say that I was burned out. But in the moment, I certainly didn't think that right. And so when we talk about preventing burnout, it can be challenging to recognize what we're experiencing and, you know, accept that we, it can be different. So kind of on that spectrum of healthy to unhealthy, do you notice with your clients just that kind of gradu graduation on the spectrum? Mm. At what point they notice it? Uh, it's... Um... I cannot give you a straightforward answer to that because uh, um, there, it's very individual, okay? People always come to me when they are having what they perceive as problems, okay? So you don't go to a therapist when you're okay. <laughs> you go to a therapist when you're not okay. Uh, and um, so some people come when things are not going according to their plans. And some people come because the doctor says that this is a, a, psych, a psychosomatic issue and that they need a psychotherapist and not uh, a physician. And some people come because they're stuck and they don't know what else to do. So this corresponds to the three phases of burnout. Um, so either they come rather early before the body has any diseases or they come when the body starts to show some symptoms or they come when they are severely, uh, let's say, um, severely lacking the energy and the resources to live a healthy life. Uh, but yeah, if I had to, to uh, point out something that they have in common, it's the it's the dissatisfaction with life that something is just wrong yeah. okay yeah and the pandemic has introduced a lot of variables in our life now right and that are adding stress both to our 
individually and to our healthcare systems globally. So a lot of professionals that are working in healthcare right now are feeling the effects of burnout and trauma in themselves yeah. and also in their clients. So how have you managed through the pandemic and how has Logosynthesis helped you personally? Um, pandemic has surely been, an, uh, let's say, a lesson for all of us. Um, and it had, like all, every time in crisis, you know, all the bad stuff surfaces. And here, all of our health systems or our, let's say, the state of our um, uh, national culture even um, came up. What, everything that is wrong just shows up in a crisis. And the um, pandemic has, uh, let's say, been a great challenge um, with how do we live what are our values how how um, how much perseverance we have how how um, what's our ad ability to adapt to, to a, a difficult situation how much solidarity can we show towards other people and I think that these are the causes that from country to country uh, the the course of the disease has been, somewhat different. Um, the, the people who deal with, with patients um, now, after a year and a half, almost two years, they're just worn out by um, doing the same thing and not taking care of themselves uh, enough because long hours, people who, are, who don't, uh, let's say, cooperate, everybody is dissatisfied, Everything is urgent, you know, their families really took a toll because they were absent for such a long time. And it's now showing throughout the system. And there was no time for no place or no energy for prevention. Uh, so um, what my colleagues are telling me now that the people who are coming now are, let's say, more ill than they were before, you know. The, the people who come now they come in the last stages, either uh, from from every uh, 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 from every specialty. Okay, so not just the the COVID patients, um, but it's showing. For me, for my part, um, first year was not that awful, but now uh, from summer on. Um, the mental issues really um, came up and I'm over flooded with, with, uh, uh, with people with anxiety, with um, difficulties um, in, 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 with cognitive difficulties, you know, I think it's stress, uh, it's, it's caused by stress. Uh, they come um, very pessimistic or, um, with fear of future. And uh, I have a lot of children at the moment uh, being uh, not homeschooled, but you know, having a school via Zoom or, or, or uh, Microsoft Teams really posed a lot of challenges. And now when they're back to school, uh, the teachers are behaving like nothing has happened, but in fact, uh, they lack the knowledge, they lack the stamina, they lack the, let's say, um, some work habits, and they just don't feel adequate. So only now for the last six months, um, I think the, the, this mental crisis has really um, shown its ugly head uh, in, 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 at least in our country. And how did logosynthesis help me? Um, I think it helped them, okay, because I can um, I can alleviate alleviate their symptoms and give them back their or they take back their energy uh, and cope with the situation uh, in a much healthier manner. Um, 
they don't wait the system to adapt to them, but they adapt to the system. It doesn't uh, really uh, make that much of a difference whether they're young or old. Plus the effect that logosynthesis has on the um, long haul COVID is uh, just marvelous, okay? Uh, I wish that our healthcare system would know how much we can do can you tell um, me a little bit about that? Yeah, long haul COVID and logosynthesis. Um, my experiences are just brilliant. I cannot give enough compliments to the approach uh, um, that Willem has developed. I, uh, um, um, I deal with psychosomatic uh, issues all the time. So I regard this long haul COVID uh, as one of them. And um, I have a three-step protocol that I use, which is always dealing with the metaphor of the COVID and then with the worst case scenario, and then uh, with several thoughts that were, let's say, stuck in the body. And uh, once you release or relieve the psychological aspect of the disease, uh, the re what remains is usually about a third of the uh, symptoms or the issues that were present at the, um, at the beginning and the um, body can handle that, okay? Once you release everything that is stuck and uh, um, give your body a chance to heal, it will do just that. And if you're not impatient and if you don't have um, unrealistic expectations, uh, you support this process and it's a success story from there on. Uh, what do I mean by um, releasing the psychological part of the disease? Well, all the people that were on respirator, uh, Almost all of them um, have um, an experience of a near-death ex uh, uh, experience, let's say, of being really scared to death, scared for their life, okay? And people who were in induced coma while they were intubated, almost all of them have some nightmares or were semi-present um, while being in this state. And um, this is all frozen energy, okay? And I, do, I can't think of a better way uh, to release it than with logosynthesis. Uh, then there's the, let's say, imprint of the virus on the body. And then there's all the fear of, will I ever be better? And um, all in this, you know, the mixture of all this, once you release everything, the, uh, the energy gets into the flow again, and again, the body heals. I think this is very important that, you know, there's health, then there's the disease, then there's the cure, and then there's the healing part. In this time, we, we tend to live so fast that we forget that after the cure, there's the rehabilitation, reintegration, the healing, you, you, you cannot, just jump from the therapy into, uh, let's say, everyday life. There is uh, uh, an in-between period as well, where you have to be really gentle and, and accepting and, and patient. Yeah, sometimes people tend to forget that. Yeah, that can be hard to remember, especially when we're suffering or we're stuck in the middle of it, right? So, right. so do you have yeah. um, like the smell? Have you worked with people who have lost their smell as well? Uh, only with two of them. Uh, mm, it was uh, the smell. Yeah. Uh, they got back their smell, let's say, to about 60, 70% after logosynthesis, and then to 90% in the next few months. So it was not much different from any other, um, let's say, consequence from the virus. Uh, once you remove the imprint of the virus 
on the olfactory uh, nerves and how the, the body processes this smell and their fear of not being able to taste and smell the food again, or uh, in one case, it was a case of, I won't smell my uh, baby anymore uh, because it was a mother and the attachment uh, was, um, let's say an issue uh, with this. Uh, and after doing the some logo on this, it it uh, went away. Okay, the the smell came back. Okay, the fear went away, and uh, the body could reintegrate this olfactory pathway once more. Um, yeah. Now uh, while talking about this, I heard myself. Uh, this is the medical knowledge. Okay, I do have an advantage here because I know how the body works and I know how the virus works. So I can guide perhaps people to um, on some other level than, than let's say a psychologist or, or a social worker would. But everybody has uh, their good uh, advantages and, and uh, this is one of mine. Let's see. Yes, everyone comes to Logosynthesis from, uh, you know, some people have a coaching background, some people have a counseling background, some people are more into therapy. There aren't a yes. lot of physicians trained in it yet, so I certainly, you know, value your contribution to the Logosynthesis community. And yeah, uh, this is, uh, our community is really diverse and this, I think this is one of the advantages that we have, that we are a really um, a mixed group of people and uh, can, let's say, learn from one another. Okay. Yeah, and just that the model that Willem developed with the three specific sentences is so structured that the sentences do the work. So as a, a guide, whether as a physician, psychotherapist, as a, uh, as a coach, you know, it's, it's building that trusting relationship with the person so that they feel comfortable to be with that distress that they're experiencing. And when they're in that position, then they can start to get in touch with what those trigger points are, right? This is one of the most beautiful things that you have just pointed out, I think, with logosynthesis, because it really, you know, the you go as deep as you want to, as deep as the person you, as the client is prepared to go or ready to go. For me, uh, one of the best things uh, is for sure that um, I know that we will do just as much as we need to do, okay? As one is prepared to do. Because as a physician, this is the major difference, okay? I was always in charge and I was always responsible for what happens. And here, this is not so, okay? Uh, the person comes in motivated to do something um, and, you know, the, the, let's say, as the dosage is like uh, self-adjusting perhaps, you know? Uh, I like you, that terminology, you yes. as much as you are prepared to do and it's enough okay this is enough for that moment i think that is beautiful okay and <laughs> it's so empowering for people right regardless where you know at what point in the spectrum they're entering whether they're whether they're looking for some personal self-care or whether they're looking to relieve trauma it's very empowering for them to recognize that the symptoms they're experiencing are you know related to something that happened to them that they can can feel um, get to a point where they can identify and resolve the trigger and and feel some relief and it's not that it happens all at once especially if it's complex trauma but um, to your point they get to that point where they're they're comfortable with right for that point in time and mm -hmm. and it empowers and them to move forward yeah, exactly. And this is how we learn logosynthesis as well, isn't it? It's, uh, I remember uh, once being in a seminar and uh, Willem said, don't write. You don't even have to write. You will get the, the um, uh, workbook and you follow the slides and just be present. 
Yeah? You will remember what you need to remember, okay? And if you don't remember it, you didn't need it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And next time when you redo it, you will remember something else because you will be ready for that, okay? So just staying uh, with the process, uh, being in the moment and, and, and trusting that whatever you need will come, I think is the beauty of it don't rush it you know just stay with it uh, this is how we learn and this is how we work i think yeah and it's such a, a beautiful model that can be used in addition to so to your point that it's not a cure-all it doesn't cover everything right it's got a place in an integrated health approach i believe um and it approaches things from an energy perspective so if we're going to heal a broken bone you know, there's a, a biological part that we have or physical part that we have to to mend, but there's also that energetic piece that we can support to to um, feel more relief and to to heal um, yeah. more fully, I but, guess. Right. Yeah. For me, you know, this is very important that this uh, energy aspect is becoming more and more acceptable in the world okay and especially in the healthcare uh because we are not only bodies okay we are mind body soul and energy okay and only when you work with everything you can achieve health and even with trauma physical trauma like you said a broken bone okay yes uh, uh we need to either put some screws in it or, or put it in a plaster, okay. But once you uh, take the energy out of the, the, um, the fracture itself, uh, uh, you re remove the energy of, let's say, the concrete where you fell or, uh, you know, the, the fear of, uh, I will never be able to walk again or uh, of the physician who was rude to you or the mother who didn't hug you or whatever is going on, then the bone can heal quickly and the body uh, responds and cooperates and you don't feel you know, stuck or in pain. And when I cooperate with my colleagues uh, um, from the hospital, they are always amazed. They use less energy, uh, um, energetics is it less painkillers less anesthesia uh there's more com uh, less complications less side effects uh you know the body just opens up and accepts the help okay so uh in this in this manner it's a very valuable approach i think uh, underused but hopefully in the future <laughs> we shall encourage people to think about the energy of the body and the imprints that that um, foreign objects leave on us. Yeah. yeah, and I think a piece of it is it's underused because we we don't really quite get it yet because it's kind of opposite against what we've been trained. Like I've got a science degree, and it from a science perspective, um, until you get into quantum physics, it doesn't really makes sense right but the fact that you can use words to shift energy to relieve suffering so you can say a couple sentences and feel better it just doesn't always um, sound normal or plausible in our our scientific or in our healthcare approaches but when you kind of appreciate that for for millenniums people use the power of words in prayer to shift their energy that in times really tough times is when people tend to um, turn to more of a spiritual side and more prayer and, and trust in energy to feel better. Um, it is more plausible. And, and the beauty of what Willem has incorporated is with his 40 years of, um, you know, his 40 year career in the in the healing and development world as he's kind of brought all of the, his learning and experience together and built in a spiritual model that is so structured that, you know, we can even use it for self coaching and and go to a certain level, just on self coaching and it's so empowering 
that you know we don't have to wait for people to to help us feel better but but the main barrier I experience when I'm talking to people is they just have it and all of us I mean me too right is that once you wrap your head around the fact that this approach can work then the rest can fall into place quite nicely I find exactly well I I will um comment on what you said at the beginning of, of uh, uh, now of your comment is that when we are in distress, we turn to prayer, we turn to the spirit, to the spiritual side. Yeah. I wish this was not so, uh, you know, not, not to waste so long when we are in such distress that we begin to, you know, look at, at the, the bigger picture. Um, but um, this is a part, this is a major issue with burnout as well, you know, because people go and uh, just work and uh, try to do everything perfectly and forget about themselves, forget about their needs, how to nurture their soul, how to nurture the relationships and how to nurture the body. They just give themselves away push themselves too hard and um, once they break down and yeah, once they get inflamed in, in all kinds of ways then they realize oh well I have a soul as well oh there's the energy part as well even though the, the name of burnout comes from the energy doesn't it it's not the body that burns out it, that you run out of the let's say the passion, yeah, we run out of energy, will. right? We run out yeah, of energy. Yeah, run out of energy. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and I guess that's my point. Like I, when I made the point earlier that if I would look back five years ago when when uh, when I really started working with logosynthesis, or even a bit further back than that when I started working with logosynthesis, I wouldn't say that I was burned out. There was nothing wrong with me. I was just really busy working really hard to make a difference and change everything around me. But it was that energy. And I thought um, Mary O'Donoghue said it so beautifully a while back, just about using your reactions as information. So, so at what point do you notice that there's something that you can work on with logosynthesis is when we kind of pause long enough to notice what we're reacting to. And so for me, it's things like, you know, is my jaw clenched? Is my heart racing? Is my head pounding? And those types of things give us an entry point into using the, you know, the logosynthesis technique to start shifting our energy so it doesn't have to stay so stuck. And I guess that's, you know, from my perspective, if we're talking prevention, you know, when we talk healthy eating, we're not talking about um, eating a nice meal today and then saving our heart attack tomorrow. It's, it's a healthy practice that we adopt and, and use routinely. And that's where I see the value of logosynthesis is that we can re notice when we're feeling tense or when that stress response is really kicked in. And then we can use that as information to apply the logosynthesis technique and, and feel more calm, more peace. And it doesn't, you know, those individual things don't come back. And when we get to the deep issues, like the, the stress and the trauma, and a lot of us have that trauma that we don't even recognize or acknowledge. Um, but when we get to those things, we can get the support of a trained professional to guide us through it. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, for, for me, one of the very powerful things that, um, let's say, I often go back to is the contact with essence, okay? The, as, as the inspiration, of how how uh, I can live, okay? So when you are in contact with essence and you are in contact with your potential and the energy is in flow, uh, for me, life is quite easy, yeah? It's quite simple. Even the hardest things are a challenge and almost, uh, let's say, a, a joy to do, even though they're hard and you're exhausted and everything, but it's okay if I use the, the TA terms, 
okay? Mm-hmm. In, and even if I want to do them in the smallest detail, it's okay. It's not the, the, the dissociation driving me, like the, I have to do it, you know? It's not the, the, the heavy, yeah. tense uh, way of doing it. And I think that's the beauty because sometimes um, the, as William puts it, you know, the second order dissociation can feel like hell uh, because you think that you're doing it right, but you're exhausting yourself. And once you, you turn around the, the, the record, yeah, uh, it just starts to flow and you're doing the same thing, but in such a, such a more pleasant manner and, and, and with so much, uh, let's say, ease that it's incredible for me it's sometimes really, I'm in awe, you know, how, how could I be so uh, stuck, so hard? How could I even... <laughs> Uh, uh, live through it. I, I, it's um, you know sometimes very incredible that you know um, how much effort I had to put into something, you know. And now there's uh, there is effort, okay, but it's not uh, rigid. It's very yeah, it's more soft. flow. And the other thing is that Willem brings up a lot is that connection to meaning, right? Like things just feel a bit more meaningful. So. Um, and I think that's part where the joy comes into your work as well, right? Like if, if you have meaning, but you don't feel like you have to change everything, but you can be there and support it like that calm in the storm, then if you can be present, then, then there's more flow there. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, looking through my notes the other day, uh, and, and, um, just uh, trying to, you know, uh, get rid of the old. And I went through uh, my scribbles and everything. And I saw that um, while I was doing the path of will, and um, we did it with Mary in in Serbia. And uh, at the end, mm, I know we were talking, you know, how different people look after this seminar because they came into contact with essence and they got their, let's say, mission in life. And uh, it shows, okay, it's like a facelift, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, the, and I scribbled like, do a before and after photos, you know? <laughs> so I had a have... conversation, I did a recording with Steve Quinn in Scotland not that long ago. And he said, yes, he said, it should be marketed as a, um, you know, an anti-aging, uh, <laughs> <laughs> an anti-aging uh, technique. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, uh, yeah I do agree. Uh, you know, how I, I'm always, you know, amazed at how many people don't even know what health is. You know, they mm-hmm. forgot. And um, once you guide them to, to, to this contact with essence and, and uh, do the reconnection uh, procedure. It's, um, uh, I don't know, I'm always grateful to be a part of this uh, yeah. process for them. Uh, and um, I know that, you know, I used to work very hard and, and be very mindful of the patients and their well being. And, and while working with TA, uh, always educating them, supporting them, yeah. Um, and I was exhausted at the end of the day. And by working with logo synthesis, uh, when you have, uh, let's say, such an opportunity to be uh, uh, present when something like this happens to a client, I leave at the end of the day my office much more energized than I came. Mm-hmm. Uh, in to, to work, you know, so, uh, and uh, I know that my colleagues often don't believe me, like, yeah, yeah, you're pulling my leg, you're, you know, like uh, advertisement on, on two legs, but it's true, okay, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, uh, um, when something like beautiful like this happens, uh, while you're in the room with this person, I just feel grateful and um, that 
is one of the aspects that I appreciate as well, you know. Yeah, um, yeah and to give hope when they're not necessarily to give hope, but when people can get in touch with a feeling of hope when, especially when they've been dealing with trauma or really chronic conditions and and to start to see that they can move forward is is so amazing to watch someone come to that realization and and one of the ones that when you kind of think of those chronic conditions that you have to learn to live with I read your blog about um tinnitus that you worked with someone uh -huh. to relieve tinnitus that ringing or buzzing in the ears and I know a number of people who suffer from tinnitus and according to the Mayo Clinic they say that many times it can't be cured but the symptoms can be treated to make it more manageable. So can you maybe just, you know, just to wrap things up, just tell us a little bit about that case and yeah. Mm -hmm. This is actually my husband's case, okay. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, he gave me the permission to, to, to share and to, to encourage other people to um, not lose hope and to deal with this and um i have plenty of clients with uh, i don't know it's you say tinnitus i say tinnitus it's okay <laughs> in latin uh, no no problem um because i um you know how uh, i say uh, us psychotherapists are like plumbers you know if you're good the word of mouth goes a long way and it's soon everybody knows that you're doing something good it's uh, uh, job well done is your your best best um, advertisement so i have a colleague who is uh, the ear nose and throat doctor and was he saw that i can um, I can alleviate the symptoms or sometimes even cure the whole situation, the whole uh, the state. Uh, I'm getting lots and lots of clients with this issue. But I started with my husband. Yeah, he's a sound engineer and he had a severe ringing in his ears and it really bothered him because he couldn't uh, record the um, all the sounds and all the all the music that he wanted to in a proper uh, and and uh, quality manner, and I offered him my help, and this is very important. Okay, you cannot do anything uh, because you want to. Always the client has to give uh, uh, has to be motivated and open uh, himself or herself up to the guide uh, you cannot do anything by force and he said yes please help me if you can because this is driving me nuts he even slept with the radio on on the, the short waves you know so that uh, so that it masked the 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 ringing in his ears and actually the app that they are selling now do just that they have some sort of white noise that mask the, the, the ringing or, or the, the noises in the ears. So uh, back to the story, once we started working on this noise with, with, uh, with him, as uh, this was, I think, uh, one of my first, this uh, psychosomatic uh, um, um, cases, uh, I went from how does one, how did he perceive the noise? So the metaphor, of, of the whole situation. And it soon um, uh, be, we soon began to peel the layers, okay? Once we alleviated the whole, um, um, how he perceives the noise in his body, he remembered that uh, it, uh, the ring started when he uh, went into a concert and the music there was very loud and it bothered him, but he, he didn't react to this um, uncomfortable situation, but uh, stayed in the concert. And of course the, the ears reacted. But once we uh, uh, lifted the experience of the concert with, with the sentences, he remembered that he went to the concert after being in Chernobyl. And uh, because he was doing a documentary for BBC at that time, 
and they went into the hospital where the children affected by the radiation um, lived like an orphanage and they had lots of consequences and it hit him really hard. Um, so the children were really suffering and living in terrible conditions. So this was the um, emotional, let's say, ground on which the concert then fell on. It's like a seed falling in onto a fertile land, okay? So he went to Chernobyl, uh, saw all these terrible things, came back all shook, shaken up, went to the concert, there was the noise, and then it resulted in the ringing. Of course, uh, this was a part of it, but each time he was stressed, the ringing became louder. So the stress component is also very important. So now the story comes together, okay? There is usually some emotional uh, situation that is like, as I said, the fertile land. Then there's some um, uh, one event that, that is like this seed that falls onto the fertile ground. And then there is the stress that aggravates the whole situation from time to time. And then there's the pessimistic scenario. Oh my God, I will never be able to sleep. I will be always like that. I will, won't be able to do my job. So part of the energy is stuck in the past. Part of the energy is stuck in the present, but a lot of it is also stuck in the future. And as we do with logosynthesis, yeah, I, um, uh, how does William put it? We slice the salami until we eat it, okay? So this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, um, an example of this. And just to bring you up to date, this was quite a lot of years ago. Um, Sasha still, so my, my partner still has some tinnitus but only when he works too hard. And um, as one of my clients beautifully put it, uh, he, uh, mm, he said, well, you know, after all this time, I think of it as my sound. This is what I sound like when I'm in distress. And this is my alarm. So when this sound, sound comes up, I know it's telling me, take care of yourself. You're pushing too hard, you're trying too hard. And when I shared this with Sasha, he said, this is gorgeous. And, uh, you know, it immediately was not, uh, let's say a nuisance anymore, but it was like a, um, a new partner at work, okay? So it completely changed the perspective. And this is what logosynthesis does. Yeah? It, it's not, uh, it's about the frame, the frame of reference. How do you, it's about the context, you know? What before was a nuisance is now a help, okay? So there you go. And you can better accept what's there, right? Like it goes from I'm okay or I'm not okay to I am, like this is where I'm at at this point in time and we can be more accept, yeah. accepting yeah. it. Other situation. Oh, yes. Tina, I love this conversation so much. I could talk to you for like another hour, but <laughs> I respect yeah. your time and I uh, I appreciate your sharing and especially in the area of, of burnout and trauma and stress mm -hmm. and so that we can better understand how logosynthesis offers sustained relief for symptoms and and when we don't experience these responses, we are healthier and we're better able to function in our everyday lives so you know i have huge respect for the work that you're doing and you're you're such an inspiration to so many that are learning about logosynthesis and and what is possible so oh, thank you because i always say uh, kathy is such an inspiration for me it's just so hands-on i uh, uh struggle with doing some research 
and you you just make up your mind send out the questionnaire and there it is you know? <laughs> just so them to know that it's a, a mutual that's mutual one of my drivers tina so <laughs> one of the sayings we always had growing up was just do it anyway right do it and get it done so yeah so i've kind of worked on that myself personally as well so that i'm not quite that uh, that driven but yes it is an inspire and there's so much wonderful talent that's available uh, so many wonderful people working with this model now too that it's a joy to share what's possible we had the guest a special <gasps> guest here all the time <laughs> so and me and lily send uh, uh, our love from slovenia and thank you for inviting me and taking the time uh, for this conversation i thank enjoyed you. it uh, a lot yeah